À, mình có cơ hội được gặp nhau trực tiếp tại thành phố Hồ Chí Minh thì uh, uh, trong cái buổi đó thì Dương cũng đã có giới thiệu với anh chị một cái hệ sinh thái của Eton uh, bên Eton sẽ xây dựng uh, thứ nhất là đại diện của hãng đó là Dương ở Việt Nam uh, bên cạnh đó thì có những đối tác và có những partner của uh, Dương sẽ cùng đồng hành với các anh chị uh, trong suốt quá trình trải nghiệm sản phẩm cũng như là các cái uh, hỗ trợ đồng hành với các cái giải pháp có công ty PTS ở đây và ở uh, đây là có anh uh, Võ Văn Thức Uh, thì song hành với đó thì từ đây đến cuối năm thì y tân sẽ tổ chức rất nhiều các cái khóa uh, training về các cái sản phẩm sam liên quan đến các công tác tính toán và thiết kế uh, phù hợp với các công ty trong các cái lĩnh vực như là tư vấn thiết kế hoặc là các công ty về liên quan đến lĩnh vực về ngành epc thì rất mong nhận được sự ủng hộ và đồng hành của các anh, anh chị thì uh, sau đây thì uh, dân xin giới thiệu bác uh, Sebastian uh, Dufay uh, sẽ có bác Sebastian thì có kinh nghiệm cũng uh, rất là nhiều năm ở trong xa thì sẽ cũng truyền tải tới các anh chị một cái phần mềm về sim card một cái phần mềm hiện nay thì rất là phù hợp cho các cái dự án liên quan đến cái khối lượng cát nhiều mà chỉ cần các việc tính toán nó tối ưu sẽ giúp cho các khách hàng có thể tiết kiệm được chi phí rất là nhiều Uh, hey Sebastian, uh, I think you can start uh, from your introduction and uh, start from your presentation. Thank you. Okay, John. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, John, first of all, uh, the session we finish at 11 a.m. Uh, Vietnam time. Is it correct? Uh, yes, correct. Okay, um, okay, okay. That's fine. Just to, to measure a bit my time and give some time for you know Q and A and all. Um, so anyway, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sebastian Dufresne. Uh, I'm regional sales manager for Eton uh, Syme Software. I've been with Eton for almost three years now. Um, and um, I, I didn't know anything about modeling and power analysis software before that, you know, and uh, I've learned everything I've learned with, with, with Eton, with my time in Eton. And um, I, I say that because today we're gonna talk about SimCap and Everything I've learned about SimCap, I've learned it with the company. And my, my message here, my own experience is that it's a software that's very um, you know, pleasant to use. It's, it's quite user-friendly. It's easy to you know, self-learn from my own experience. And I'm not a design engineer, I can tell you that. Um, so today I'd like to share about this, this experience with, with you guys. Um, so today we'll, we'll talk mostly about SimCap. Um, and, you know, I'll go through a very brief introduction because I have to, um, talking about, you know, just time and in, in general, um, and then we'll jump pretty 100% focus on SimCap. So I will get started uh, without further ado. So I'll go through some slides. Of course, I want this to, you know, give you a, a bit of a hands-on exposure to SimCap software. So I will jump to the software from time to time so that we can make the link between, you know, all those slides and, and you know, the actual software and how to use the actual software to model problem accurately and, um, you know, do all the analysis that you may need for your, your project. All right. So <clears throat> first of all, talking about SIME. So, you know, just as a reminder, SIME, was created and founded you know, in 1986 by a few um, you know, researchers from uh, some utility company in, in Canada. Uh, and their vision was to create you know, a leader company uh, for power engineering software. So that's where SIM comes from. Uh, as we have been growing, we were acquired by Cooper uh, in 2008. Cooper was acquired by Eaton in 2012. So we're not now part of Eaton, but still with the same DNA and you know 100% focus on software solution. Um, so in Asia Pacific, um, we have quite a number of users, and especially talking about SimCap. SimCap has been a very very successful product. Um, many utilities in Asia Pacific are using SimCap. Uh, you'll see people like you know Thailand PA. Uh, TNB is using uh, in, in Malaysia as well. Uh, we've got uh, the UTT in Singapore as well. Uh, most of the utilities in Australia. So, you know, really, really a number of users there. Um, and also cable manufacturers, consultants, uh, you know, so it's, it's been really a, a very 
very used product, very successful, a lot of install base. Um, and, and this is really due to the fact that SimCap was introduced into the market very early, you know, very early. And we've, we've got a lot of pioneer in the field of empacity calculation who've been involved with that product. So time today, in terms of uh, mm. solutions, you know, as a whole, um, we have power engineering software, you know, for software, we have some engineer solution more catered towards utility for the data integration, uh, for server based solution, customized web application, things like this. Um, and in the, you know, for software we have, uh, where well, we've got SIM power system analysis, which is our network modeling platform and, and power system analysis. Uh, we've got SIM ground, which is for the grounding design, uh, SIM TCC, which is for protection coordination studies, and SIMCAP, which we'll talk about today, which is all entirely dedicated to cable opacity, power cable opacity. So that's all. Yes, John, uh, please. Can you come back to the customer reference? I will uh, have some brief uh, for our own participant first. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Nhà Trang Dương xin giới thiệu lại các anh chị một chút để các anh chị hình dung về cái ngữ cảnh của phần mềm SIMCAP. Thì uh, SIMCAP cũng là một uh, phần trong cái hệ sinh thái của phần mềm SAM. Uh, SAM là một cái phần mềm được uh, ra đời vào năm 1986, gọi là một trong những thành phần, uh, gọi là những... Uh, phần mềm đầu tiên trên thế giới khi mà nói về phần mềm để tính toán hệ thống lưới điện thì đối với phần mềm SAM thì có rất nhiều các cái khách hàng trên toàn thế giới thì năm 2008 thì Copper mua lại và đến năm 2012 thì Eaton mua lại Copper thì Inesam sẽ thuộc về Eaton chính thức là năm 2012 thì đối trong khu vực Đông Nam Á này thì uh, phần mềm SIMCAP cũng có rất nhiều các cái thành công và cũng đã được ứng dụng rất nhiều cho các cái công ty về điện lực ví dụ như các cái công ty điện lực về ở Thái Lan như PEA hay là mình có TNB ở Malaysia hay PLN Indonesia hay là Kepo các Hàn Quốc uh, thì bên cạnh đó thì cũng có các nhà sản xuất cáp như là ABB hay là LS và cũng như các cái công ty tư vấn lớn như là Wally Parkson họ cũng đang sử dụng phần mềm SIMCAP trong cái quá trình tính toán fit design hay là các cái thiết kế ban đầu của họ thì uh, đấy là những cái reference uh, và y tân và phần mềm Sam cũng rất là tự hào để giới thiệu tới các anh chị uh, Can you change to next slide uh, Sebastian? Yeah. À, thì đây là một cái um, slide rất là của, uh, um, uh, toàn diện về uh, cái hệ sinh thái của uh, Sam mọi người có thể Sam có những cái ứng dụng trải dài từ các lĩnh vực truyền tải lĩnh vực phân phối cho đến là lĩnh vực CNI thì uh, trong đó thì có phần mềm tính toán chuyên về hệ thống lưới điện sim card thì chuyên về tính toán phát nhiệt cáp uh, và sắp xếp cáp rồi uh, sim grounding chuyên tính toán về uh, tiếp điện cho các cái trạm uh, uh, trạm điện và cuối cùng đó là tính toán chỉnh định các thông số uh, bảo vệ thì uh, ngày nay các cái phần mềm thì đều cần phải liên đới và có làm chung trong cái hệ sinh thái và cần có một cái sự sắp xếp và tư vấn cụ thể khi nó đi kèm với các uh, có cần liên đới với các hệ thống như Scala, AMI và OMS thì uh, từng bước từng bước trong cái hành trình đi với anh chị thì Dương sẽ cố gắng và sẽ giới thiệu tới anh chị từng phần về các cái ứng dụng toàn bộ của Sam trong toàn bộ lưới điện nó sẽ đi song hành uh, cả về phần cứng và phần mềm thì trong buổi ngày hôm nay thì chúng ta sẽ tập trung nhiều về sim card và uh, chúng ta sẽ tập uh, có cái cách nhìn cách thức sử dụng sim card như thế nào thì anh chị sẽ có cái nhìn rõ rõ và cụ thể hơn và xong các cái chuyên đề về sau thì Dương sẽ tập trung từng các cái chuyên đề một OK sẽ bắt chưa you can uh... Continue. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, so <clears throat> that was all for the introduction about SIM. So now let's talk about SIMCAP and, and dive into the this topic. So SIMCAP is our <clears throat> catalog software, you know, which is dedicated to opacity calculation and temperature rise. So, you know, in, in in, in brief, you know, you talk about SIMCAP, what, what, what is the purpose of SIMCAP? Well, the purpose of SIMCAP is to, you know, be able to accurately model a power cable and the installation of that cable and the environment to be able to make a proper calculation of the opacity of that cable, opacity rating. Um, 
or the temperature rise. So, you know, why this is important is because it's important to understand that SIMCAP is based a lot on thermal analysis. Thermal analysis, you know, we're looking at heat transfer, you know, heat transferring from a conductor, you know, which is a, a metal, metallic element, which is gonna have current flowing through it. And as we all know, any conductor is producing heat. You know, as long as we've got electricity through it, heat is being produced. And as we also know very well, heat is the, is the enemy of performance for any electrical component, you know, in the field. Um, and, that, and that's really the base of this. You know, we want to know how can we optimize the rating of our cable, you know, without reaching <clears throat> the, the temperature limit that is being set by the problem, okay? So maybe we start with a temperature limit and then um, we will look for current or we have a current value. We want to understand what's gonna be the temperature, you know, at the end of the problem. You know, SIMCAP can play with those two uh, parameters. So SIMCAP offers what, you know, it offers a lot of modeling capabilities to start with detailed cable modeling. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail later. Um, and also, you know, we talk about what we would call standard and non-standard installations. So here, you know, we are looking at things that, you know, are either straight coming out of IEC standards, you know, and very well described, or things that are a little bit more sophisticated, include more elements, and you know, we'll fall more in the non-standard installations, uh, leveraging things like finite element analysis. One thing about SIMCAP is that it's been from the beginning following very, very strictly, um, you know, the, the whatever has been written in the IEC standards and the IEEE standards on the topic. So, you know, we have extremely good compliance with that. And everything that's been written in those standards has pretty much been implemented into SIMCAP, okay? Uh, but the other good thing is that we went beyond that, okay? Because if you just just look at what the, those IEC standards are describing, um, you know, it's, it's, it's too limited in some ways, you know? Um, they are describing simple scenarios of, you know, some simple buried cable, maybe, one duct bank, you know, like this one you see at the bottom. Um, but today we have problems which are a lot more complex, you know, may involve different duct bank buried in different layer of soil, different thermal resistivities. Uh, it can be a lot more complex. So, you know, we, in SIMCAP, we have been introducing tools to also model those complex scenarios, but in an easy way. Okay, so that's all the strengths of SIMCAP is to give you a sophisticated tool, but easy to use. So in SIMCAP, we have different modules. You know, I mean, of course, when uh, some customers are interested in, in buying some license of SIMCAP, um, depending on the projects you have, you may be dealing with different scenarios. Okay, not everybody has the same type of installation. Some people deal with uh, sub submarine cables, maybe some people deal with buried cable. Some people have duct banks. Some people have some cable in air. Um, so, you know, there was a need to define modules dedicated to different scenario. So the base module of SIMCAP, um, pretty much we have this range of installation, which is the simplest, what we call those standard installation, okay? From directly buried to backfill, including cable in air and so on. And I'll show more in detail afterward. And then we have also plenty of add-on to either enhance the installation or the analysis, you know? whether you need to introduce cable in a tunnel like this one, or you have several layer of soils 
uh, and you need some multiple duck bank and backfill uh, capabilities, or you have large non-magnetic casing, uh, and you can use that, you know, multiple casing module. Um, and for the analysis, it depends on your needs as well. You know, do you have a uh, need to study magnetic field or do you have cable crossing in your installation? So, you know, we have different modules that can help you to address different needs. So, you know, let's just get back, you know, step back here. Um, let's take a step back and look at, you know, what is the, the purpose of SIMCAP again, you know, we emphasize on that. What is cable opacity rating? I'm, I'm sure many of you already know, but anyway, opacity rating. So opacity that that's a current. Okay, and what are we looking at? We're looking at what is otherwise called a current carrying capacity. You know, and really, when we look at a, a steady state uh, aspect, uh, we are looking at what is the max current that my cable can can withstand before the max temperature is reached, okay? So that's that's a simple problem in a way, you know, at least it's pretty clear. We have a power cable and we know the limit of temperature because I've got the cable manufacturer data sheet and it tells me what is the, you know, temperature limit based on what my insulation layer or whatever is next to the conductor, uh, could withstand, and you know that temperature might be 90 degrees, maybe. Um, and so I have this data, and this is I want to know how much current I can have in my cable before reaching this. So, you know, and sometimes I, I can look at the problem the other way around. Again, that's something we can do in SimCap. You know, occasionally, you know, like you can see, the current value would be given. So I know, oh, that specific cable, I, I, I have to run 250 ampere inside of it, you know, but I want to know what is the temperature distribution, okay? Um, temperature distribution within the cable and in the environment, because maybe my project has certain consideration. I cannot heat up, you know, the, the, the soil around the installation too much. Okay, so that's, that's really the, the main purpose of SIMCAP. What are the factors affecting cable opacity? Well, mostly there are three things, okay? First of all, cable construction, you know. As always, when you do modeling, it's a simulation, okay? It's it's an image, a picture of the reality. And we need that picture to be as accurate as possible if we want the solution of the problem to be accurate as well, you know? So of course, that's where the challenge is most of the time, is getting your base element of the simulation to be accurate, okay? So the first thing you need to deal with is cable construction, you know, in SimCap, you have all the capabilities to, to build your cable, single core, three core cables, all type of layers. You can add other layers. You can make custom material, things like that. So, you know, there is capability to have accurate cable model. Then the next thing is cable installation, okay? Because obviously one cable, depending on, where it's being installed will not perform the same, you know? So if you put it directly buried in the soil, then the performance depend on thermal resistivity of that soil. But if you start to put it into like here, you know, a duct bank and, you know, that duct bank is made of a material with specific thermal resistivity, then that will impact the, the thermal, you know, behavior of, of that cable because of the surrounding. And maybe I can put something in the duct here, maybe a fluid or a solid medium to improve the thermal 
behavior, the thermal performance of this installation. And that will help to eventually improve the capacity of my cable. So, you know, this is very important also, you know, how we install that cable, trying to model this installation as accurate as possible, you know, in terms of dimensions, in terms of type of material, um, want to make sure that it's a good, good picture of the problem. And then environmental conditions. This is the third very important aspect that will also affect cable opacity. So I keep talking about soil thermal resistivity, okay? And that is very important. Thermal resistivity is really gonna condition how the heat transfer happen, you know? Obviously when the cable, the temperature is going up and heat is being produced, if it has a soil that has low thermal resistivity, you know, that the heat is gonna flow quickly, you know? But if the resistivity is high, it's gonna be less favorable to quick transfer of heat. So the cable will keep on heating up probably faster, all right? It's all about regulating that, you know, temperature rise in a way. Ambient temperature is also important. You know, of course, if your soil here is at a high temperature, uh, that's, that's less good. You know, of course, you're gonna, you're gonna affect the performance of cable. So you need to look at temperature of the soil and maybe temperature of the soil at different depths. You know, maybe the temperature of my soil here is 24 degrees, maybe a bit lower, you know, two meters lower, it's 23 degrees or, you know, it, it depends. You have to look into that, you know, and, and how you want to model your problem more accurately. Uh, hi Sebastian, can you come back? Uh, to... Yes, John. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, cái này Dương xin phép dừng một chút để giới thiệu về phần này thì uh, như một số cái, các anh chị cũng có thể đã biết nhưng mà tổng thể thì nói là, uh, có nhiều các cái chủng loại cáp các nhà sản xuất khi họ đưa ra thì họ cũng đã có trong catalog về cái nhiệt độ mà khi vận hành và cái cách sắp xếp mà thường đa số đấy là cái cách thức lắp đặt cáp uh, cơ bản gọi là trong điều kiện lý tưởng và cũng như là trong cái điều kiện gọi là uh, đầy đủ mà thực tế trong quá trình thực tế thì khi mà lắp đặt ở ngoài thì sẽ có rất nhiều các cái cây mà các anh chị sẽ gặp nó sẽ khác không giống như trong catalog và cũng như là giống trong lý thuyết bởi vì có những lúc mình có những cái đường vòng có những lúc mình có những cáp phải đi bắt chéo nhau có những lúc mà cái môi chất mà mình lắp đặt cáp nó sẽ khác nhau thì sau khi người ta tính toán thì người ta sẽ có ba cái yếu tố mà ảnh hưởng tới cái việc mà khả năng chịu tải, khả năng phát nhiệt của cáp thì nó nhất đó là về cái chủng loại cáp thì tất nhiên trong quá trình chọn cáp mình sẽ loại là cái số co loại cáp nghĩa là cũng ảnh hưởng thì đấy là về cái từ nhà sản xuất thì ngay từ trong nhà sản xuất người ta cũng đã phải sử dụng phần mềm để người ta tính toán sao cho cái khoản cái chủng loại cáp của họ có cách thức hoạt tốt nhất đến cái yếu tố thứ hai đó là cách thức lắp đặt cáp thì các anh lắp đặt cáp thì hay là sắp đặt theo hình thức như thế nào theo trong ống hay là chôn trực tiếp rồi là các cái vật liệu mà mình chôn vào như sỏi đất sét hay là cát thì những quá trình đấy thì cần có một cái công cụ để giúp cho mình có thể thử nghiệm để xem là uh, trong quá trình đấy mình có thể sử dụng sỏi hay là một số các cái môi chất khác mình có thể bơm vào trong các cái ống để tăng cái khả năng uh, vận hành của chủ loại cát và cuối cùng đó là cái môi trường hoạt động thì cái môi trường hoạt động thì nó cũng ảnh hưởng đến từng vùng và miền để mình biết được là cái nhiệt độ môi trường xung quanh nó là bao nhiêu cái bức xạ của mặt trời nó là như thế nào trong khu vực đấy rồi là cái độ ẩm khô của đất nó như thế nào thì khi mình nắm bắt được các cái yếu tố vận hành vậy mình đưa vào trong một phần mềm thì từ đó mình sẽ có một kết quả tính toán về khả năng phát nhiệt cáp rất là chính xác hơn thì lúc đấy mình có một cái nhìn và có cái sự tính toán nó dựa trên cơ sở khoa học và các cái này họ cũng căn cứ vào trong các cái thuật toán đã nghiên cứu rất nhiều từ lâu năm thì khi mà sử dụng như này thì nó sẽ tự tin hơn trong quá trình thiết kế và cũng như là đi cáp trong thực tế trong các cái dự án và có cái khối lượng cáp rất là lớn và càng uh, tối ưu được cái cách thức lắp đặt thì cái hiệu quả kinh tế sẽ càng là cao à, ok sẽ phát triển All right, thanks, John. Calculation standards and references. So that is that is really 
you know, more, more for your information, uh, you know, of course, it's always interesting to go back to what, you know, what standards we're talking about. Um, so you've got a few of those, you know, IEC. So, you know, there's just strong compliance and, you know, we're following closely all the IEC standards that have been written on the topic of empacity calculation. And the first one is really, you know, the, the most important, um, you know, one that's certainly the, the most, most leveraged uh, and used. This IEC 6287, which you, you know, as far as empacity rating goes, you, you, you'll hear about that a lot. Um, and then a few others, you know, talking about the emergency current rating and short circuit and DC resistance and, and so on. So, you know, I invite you to refer to the detail of those standards if you have interest. Um, like any standards, they are big, thick documents with many pages. So enjoy the read. Um, and, you know, also as a reference to some uh, IEEE standard as well, talking about standard power cable capacity tables. And also, you know, we, we have a few, a few papers and your know, books uh, that are serving as, as reference for some of what has been implemented in SIMCAP. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, especially for that second point, uh, Mr. George J. Anders, who is one of the key person really, and who's been a very um, important contributor to this, you know, science around the, the power cable empacity calculation, um, is actually the person who uh, worked first on the uh, engine of SIMCAP software, actually. So he's at the origin of the product and he's still, still involved uh, with with us with Syme um, to help us to to keep keep improving the product. So we have you know fair, some very good reference and and solid uh, contribution to to make sure that SimCap keeps being ahead um, in terms of innovation. One thing I wanted to mention here, um, which which I think is is also interesting for for all the participants here to to take a look at, you know, whenever they, they would have the chance. Um, one of the most recent case of validation of SimCap, you know, because of course SimCap is, is a modeling software. Like any modeling software, the question is always how accurate is the, the result? You know, how accurate is this? How, how am I guaranteed that I'm actually calculating the right thing? Um, and, and that's fair enough. This is definitely a valid question. Uh, of course, SimCap already from the start uh, I've been validated um, against measurement in the field. Okay, so we already have a few utilities we've been working with in the past who have been comparing the result of SIMCAP with actual field measurement. Okay, so literally just checking with SIMCAP, what do I find current versus temperature? And in the field, I actually go to that very cable and measure the temperature and look at the current value, you know, and then that's how you can make sure that's the best way. Um, so this has been done obviously from the beginning, but here recently, um, if you're familiar with the Seagray, um, the Seagray B156, um, they actually came up with a publication, which I don't think is yet uh, officially published, but you, you, I, I think they are coming up with, that document in the near future. And it's basically uh, a document that discuss a set of 11 case studies, okay? That is provided where we have some, you know, medium voltage, high voltage, AC and DC cable system considered for land and submarine applications. And basically SIMCAP has been a uh, benchmark against that study done by the CIGRE, all right? so. You know, that's something to be looking for. And, you know, I'd be more than happy to share the reference of that um, whenever that document would be officially published you know, so that I think any any participant in the call may be interested in learning more about that. So, you know, it's it's Seagray. So obviously that's a document you may have to buy from Seagray. You know, it's a, it's a paying document, uh, but it should be a very interesting study. Do you want to comment on that, John? Or? Uh, I think that's okay. Um, okay, okay, no problem. I, I thought you were unmuting yourself. No problem. All right. 
So, okay, let's let's jump off the slides a little bit for a moment, you know, just not to get bored with PowerPoint. I'm just going to open SimCap, you know, now just to get a bit a bit started with looking at the document. Thì vừa rồi là một cái thước bác sẽ bác chưa muốn nói mọi người về tổng quan nữa nhưng là cái mindset mà khi người ta xây dựng phần mềm mà tại sao người ta xây dựng lên phần mềm cũng như các cái tiêu chuẩn và các cái cơ sở khoa học để người ta đưa vào trong phần mềm thì cái phần đầu nó cũng hơi giới thiệu lý thuyết một tí thì sau đây thì chúng ta sẽ đi vào phần thực hành thì chắc là các anh chị đã cài phần mềm và kích hoạt license rồi thì mình có thể cùng mở phần mềm lên và follow các cái bước của bác sẽ bắt chiêm các anh chị nhé All right. Well, you know, in in the first step, uh, I'll just go through this, um, you know, navigator screen. So when you open SimCap, and and then you know, I plan later during the presentation to you know try and show some uh, specific example of some elements. But first, it's important to get familiar with you know the interface, and the different menus um, because you have to get started with this. So. When you open SimCap, you get this navigator that is really popping up on the screen. Um, that, that's the one you find here, you know, that open folder button. And the navigator has a few tabs, which pretty much contains all your database, okay? Database of studies, where you have all the different scenarios uh, that you've been modeling and saving in your study. So in SimCap, how it works, we have a two layers system where we've got, you know, the, the main folder is called the study and the subfolders are called the executions. So you can have as many executions as you want under one study, okay? And save your different type of scenarios and, you know, anything for your project. The next tab is the cable. Okay, uh, and a cable is very important because it has the first thing you should be doing. Needless to say, if your model of cable is not there, you're not going to be able to go and start making an installation and start making an analysis. You have to start with the cable. Okay, and you will see in SimCap that there are already cables in there, but they are not complete database for all the cable in the world, for all the manufacturer in the world, that, that's just not feasible uh, in a way, uh, because there are also a lot of custom made cable for certain projects sometimes. So, you know, it's just, it's just something that's not been feasible so far, but there are plenty of cables here, different voltage levels, different, you know, single core, three core, all kinds of cable type. Um, which can be used as a reference. You know, if you start with a cable and you feel like, you know, I've got a, an 11 kV cable that's quite similar to that, you, you could use this model, duplicate it, create your own cable out of, out of this one by modifying, or you start from scratch. But anyway, that's really the prerequisite, modeling your cable, okay? Uh, and, and later I will, I'll show you what, one example, just to show you a bit the steps of modeling a cable. Though, though I'm not a cable cable expert and cable modeling expert, but I'll, I'll try my best to go through all the steps. Um, the duct bank here is when you deal with duct bank, okay? And here it's really about defining the geometry of the duct bank, the size, where the ducts are. And what you see here, our duct bank with rows and columns. But you can also model what we would call non-standard duct bank, where maybe you have a, you know, one duct here, one duct here, one duct here, you know, like a triangle shape. That's possible. I you can do that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can, can I take care of some mini? Trước mắt cho Dương hỏi là mọi người đã cài xong hết phần mềm chưa ạ? Các anh chị cho Dương thông tin được không ạ? Để Dương biết Dương điều chỉnh cái tốc độ của cái phần trên ninh ạ? Các anh chị đã có hết phần mềm và đã kích hoạt được license chưa ạ?
À, dạ rồi, cảm ơn anh Võ Bảo. À, ok, giờ sẽ đợi thêm một chút để anh chị có thêm thời gian để trước khi đi sâu vào trong cái phần thực hành. À, thì trong cái phần chatbox có để link và thức cũng vừa biết lại cái code cho mọi người thì mọi người có thể vào phần start tìm license manager sau đó thì paste cái mã activation code vào trong đó thì mình sẽ có license để sử dụng Uh, for some uh, people, um, user in English here, uh, we uh, also uh, paste for the activation code in the chat box so you can uh, start the license manager 3.0 uh, in your computer and uh, then uh, paste the activation code in the active uh, task and then you can start to use the software. So, uh, okay, thank you. So uh, I think now we Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, Sebastian also help uh, the show you in. Um, yes, you can uh, uh, open the license manager and in the tab registration and admit you uh, paste the activation code which we send you uh, and uh, you can uh, active uh, for some duration uh, to use the software. À, nếu không có thêm phản hồi thì chắc là Dương sẽ uh, tiếp tục uh, với phần uh, chuyên ninh nhé thì Trong quá trình nếu có phần nào nhanh quá thì anh chị cứ nhắn vào trong chat box Thì Dương sẽ điều chỉnh lại cho phù hợp à, Ok, sẽ bắt trước, uh, you can uh, start All right, no problem So, again, this duck bank tab is for defining duck bank The geometry of the duck bank In actual fact, anything that's material type, feeling of the duct, that kind of thing, you can define it later into the um, installation that you design later. Uh, job, te job template um, is for the uh, multiple duct bank module, where basically we define installation with different backfills, different duct bank, uh, and we can save as a template to reuse in other project. So that's exclusively for people who use the multiple duct bank module. The next three tabs, we're talking about transient analysis. Okay, and I'll, I'll comment a bit more about that later. But basically, transient analysis, we're not longer looking at steady state. Okay, steady state where we just run current in cable as long as possible until we see the temperature limit and that's it. You know, that's steady state. We're reaching a maximum, that's our solution. But transient, we are looking at a profile over time. Okay, we're looking at what happened if my current in the cable is, is following a certain profile, you know? Um, maybe the, the thermal, behavior, you know, and the temperature will also follow a certain profile and maybe not reach the temperature limit or maybe reach it, but just for a short amount of time. Um, so that's what we want to do with those. You know, we want to define in sync up, we define shape and shape is basically, is just a profile, you know, over a certain amount of time with a per unit, you know, value, load, load factor basically. And those shape can be combined, you know, in different different portion to create a load profile, different load profile. As you can see at the bottom, we can see the whole, you know, picture of the load profile. Um, depending on, you know, what you're what you're looking at. Um, or it could be so. Here, if we do a load profile, it will be a current profile. Okay, so. I want to say what, what is my current through a certain cable. But as you can see, we can also do heat source because we also want to see a problem where if we are looking at you know, a, a heat source in the vicinity of the installation, maybe that heat source also has a profile. You know, it's not always 100 degrees continuously or you know, whatever it is. Uh, it might change over time. 
So, you know, this is, there's capability in SimCap to look at transient studies and really look at what happened if I've got a, a different profile over time. The utility tab is all about where you save your data, quite self-explanatory, your main directory, your backup directory, if you've got any, uh, your, you know, append, if you want to take a piece of database, put it into this one. Um, and you can also, you know, with that tag mode enable here, if I would click here, I have a location that appear here, it is copied tagged to, uh, and I can start selecting different elements in my, um, you know, database, model of cables, duct bank. And, you know, when I go there and apply, it just extract that piece of database, not the entire database. So it's quite good to be uh, selective. All right. So, yeah. Uh, can you open uh, again? The, yeah, I think it is a good... Uh... I need to uh, explain again. Comment a bit. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, cái phần này là trước phần khi bắt đầu thì Dương cũng muốn giới thiệu mọi người về một chút về uh, cái tổng thể. Tại vì uh, khi mà mọi người hiểu được cái cấu trúc tổ chức của sản phẩm uh, của cái phần mềm thì uh, cách tiếp cận nó sẽ trở lên dễ hơn. Thì uh, trong phần mềm SimCap thì họ đã bố trí uh, cho mọi người gần như là đã toàn bộ các ứng dụng đã làm sẵn ở trong đó rồi. Thứ nhất là trong cái mục Study, nó chính là các cái cây và các cái ứng dụng mà người ta đã uh, gọi là uh, có sẵn các cái ví dụ để mọi người có thể tham khảo các cái Study. Đấy là cái tác đầu tiên. Thì mọi người vào đấy mọi người có thể biết được là người ta đã sử dụng cái ứng dụng này như thế nào. Thì đấy là trong phần Study. Phần thứ hai đó là phần cable thì trong phần cable sẽ có rất nhiều các chủng loại cáp thì mọi người có thể vào đấy tìm các cái chủng loại cáp nào nó gần nhất với ứng dụng của mình thì nó sẽ nhanh hơn. Cái phần thứ ba đó là đắp banh thì đó là cái phần cái cách sắp xếp là trong các cái ống thì mọi người có thể vào cũng vào trong đó để tìm cái cách sắp xếp cáp cho phù hợp. À, rồi tiếp theo là job template thì giống như là một cái uh, phần uh, các cái mẫu mà người ta đã sắp xếp và tổ chức thì mình có thể tham khảo và lập lại. À, rồi đến tiếp theo đó là phần shape và phần hit show, thì giống như là các cái phần các cái thông số để cho mô phỏng thì mai sau mọi người có thể uh, quay lại đây để mọi người uh, lựa chọn các cái nguồn nhiệt cũng như là các cái cách thức vận hành tài sao cho phù hợp với thực tế của mình thì tại vì uh, khi mà nói đến nhiệt thì ngoài cái phần mà yếu tố liên tục nó cũng có cái yếu tố về tuần hoàn ngắn hạn và dài hạn thì khi mà mình mô phỏng mình hiểu được cái cấu trúc tổ chức như vậy thì cái kết quả mô phỏng sẽ chính xác hơn và cái thư mục cuối cùng là utility thì chính là cuối cùng mà mình có nếu mà có, có các cái mốt như là enable tag nghĩa là mình có thể lựa chọn những cái cái database nó gần nhất với các cái ứng dụng của mình để từ đó thì mình có thể copy và apply và khi mà mình lựa chọn cái mốt đấy thì nó sẽ nhẹ nhàng hơn cho cái project của mình nghĩa là ở trong đây người ta đã để sẵn rất nhiều gọi là uh, rất nhiều cái ứng dụng người ta để chung nhưng mà thực tế thì khi mà mình dùng mình chỉ chiếm khoảng độ 5% hay 10% thôi nên là khi mà mình sử dụng cái tag enable nó sẽ giúp mình cái database của mình nhẹ đi rất là nhiều và nó sẽ nhanh hơn mình không phải nhất thiết là copy cho toàn bộ thì đấy là ý nghĩa của cái phần tag cuối cùng là utility thì uh, Dương cũng xin giới thiệu sơ qua để các anh chị nắm được cái cách thức tổ chức của phần mềm thì sau đây mình sẽ tiếp tục với phần và phần chi tiết hai uh, chưa you can continue Thanks, John. Okay. I'll just go back to the slide for a bit. So let's just go back to, you know, a bit of a look at the, the modeling capabilities in, in SimCap, you know, just to you know, summarize a bit. So first of all, you know, looking at cable. Again, SimCap, you know, very complete capabilities there. Um, it's a system where we go layer by layer starting from the conductor and you know going outside um, we can model all type of material you know you've got standard material uh, or you can do custom material um, and then you know plenty of of different values parameters can be uh, customized or even the software as in a few place automatically you know, suggested values uh, based mostly on the IEC uh, standards, you know, because in the IEC standards, even for specific materials, you find already defined uh, values actually that can be used. And so, you know, this is, this is very complete. Um, we even added uh, in, in some of the, the recent versions, 
the capability to add more uh, non-magnetic layers. So, you know, for example, some of the um, cables that some of our users had um, add more than those typical layers uh, that, that we normally see in most of the cables. So, you know, they had some additional tapes, additional, you know, uh, small layers. So we have the capability now to put even more additional layers. So really very complete um, capability there. So again, we can do a single core cable, can do three core cable. We can model, uh, you know, different type of uh, conductor constructions, um, you know, stranded wires, you know, um, round or shaped, etc. You know, so pretty much very complete, you know, all, all type of, um, of cables and, and conductor shape and design can be, um, can be modeled. And yeah, you know, in order to really show you that better, so we're now gonna jump into a, a specific example. And, and before I do that, so basically the, the example I'm gonna challenge myself to show you today um, is this example here. So we are looking at this, you know, single core cable um, and, you know, the data sheet here. So that's data sheet from manufacturer. So the one important thing is that every manufacturer has different data sheet, has different information, okay? And sometimes they are, they are missing information. Or, you know, sometimes you may look at it and feel like, hey, this is incomplete. Uh, some of that is not 100% is not clear. Um, of course, that's, that's the challenge, you know, of, of making an accurate model is to have have accurate information to, to create that model. You know, of course, if the data sheet is incomplete, you're missing information. It's a bit hard because you're gonna have to, to make smart assumptions. Okay, and I think smart assumptions is, is, the, is the one way to go. So sometimes some information helps you to make assumptions about other ones. Sometimes experience helps you to make the right assumptions as well, you know? Uh, for some specific layers, for example, um, by experience, we have values that work most of the time, you know, and, and you also need to understand what really has a strong impact on the problem or not, you know, uh, because some layers, sometimes if you're not 100% sure of the thickness, um, but we have a rough idea, um, you know, then sometimes it's not, it's not so impactful. Okay, so that being all said, um, let me go now into that cable. So I'll go into the cable model. Uh, of course, I need to be armed with my uh, data sheet of cable. You know, and when you, when you do that, you should have it with you. And the important thing is gonna be to identify layer per layer. You know, what, what are those layers in the cable? And the very important thing is to know which are the magnetic, uh, and I mean the, the metallic layer, sorry, metallic layer and the non-metallic layer. So if I go in the cable and I create a new cable and I will call it uh, cable 27 May. Actually, that's you know probably not the name you would want to put as, as a designer, you know, you probably want to say, uh, you know, cable 15 kV aluminum, uh, that's probably what you want to say. Um, so, you know, I could put that 15 kV, or, you know, this is just my cable idea, maybe in the title here, I'm gonna put that, you know, 15 kV aluminum, put as many, you know, details you want. Here in the group cable name, you can pick one of the name you create, you can type another name if you like, okay. Um, I would just put it in that, you know, training folder, which I have, uh, you could put comments. That's, you know, up to you. All right. Um, so this is the first screen we get. Um, and here, you know, it's important to look as well, you know, what, what kind of 
what kind of cable data sheet I have here. Um, so, you know, what I'm seeing here is, you know, as a matter of fact, the sizes I have is, is more from the, uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely from the uh, imperial system, not the metric. So, you know, for that specific example, I have to change here the unit system, but that's something you can do. So, you know, if you have, if you have a data sheet that tells you things in inches and other, you know, more, uh, you know, US origin type of, of data, you know, you, you can change the, the unit system. Uh, if it's metric, use metric. So here for that specific example, I use that, but the steps are the same. So, you know, don't be too bothered by this. Uh, we're just talking about dimensions in a different unit system, but the steps to build the cable, exactly the same. All right, so first of all, okay, looking at my cable here, I've got my single core. So, you know, that's the first thing I wanna do. I wanna pick here, single core. And now I've got my you know, conductor, my insulation layer here. Okay, that's my first step. Um, and then I want to go here and define the cable type. Okay, so I've got several selections. Actually, through the evolutions of SimCap um, software, you know, some things have stayed, but really today, you know, uh, the advice I can give is that except if you have a pipe type cable, which is a very, very um, specific type or those LPOF, you know, the low pressure oil field cable. Um, if you have one of those, select the type, you know, accurately. Um, if you have something that is kind of the, the rest, those four here, you, you can put other and it sort of include everything. So it's, it's not gonna restrict you too much. So here, you know, for me, I just select other and that would get me going. Now, operating voltage. So, you know, again, refer back to my data sheet. Um, okay, wait, sorry, I'm gonna use that. Okay, so we're talking about 15 kV, that's fine. Let's just go at just 15 kV, okay. And then they ask me the conductor area, okay? Conductor area, which could be, you know, a uh, square millimeter, here is square inch. Um, again, refer to your data sheet, make sure uh, what is the, um, what is the unit system that, that you have here, okay? So here, I've got this conductor area is right here. And also it's this 500 KC mil, which is that unit I want. So I can go here and I look for my unit system and I got the area here, okay? So that's the value. Again, you know, just look for what's here. If it's square millimeter, instead of inch, square inch, you would, you know, use the metric unit system and select, you know, the right value. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm already off to a good start. You know, I've got my conductor, I've got my insulation layer, um, but obviously I've got more than that here. You know, in actual fact, I see that I have a conductor, I've got a conductor shield, an insulation, insulation shield, I got concentric wires, I got a jacket, okay? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six layers. And right now I got only two on my model. And even more interesting, I've got insulation and conductor, conductor and insulation, okay? So looking at my data sheet here. So basically I've got this one, the conductor, and I got the insulation. So first of all, there's something between the conductor and the insulation, which is that conductor shield. And then there is the insulation shield on top of the insulation and then concentric wire and jacket. So do observe this, you know, go through layer by layer and you see the list here. First comment, sometimes the name can be a little bit different, okay? A little bit different. So for example, here, let's look, conductor shield, do I find it? Yes, I find conductor shield. I check it here, okay, and now it's being added. Okay, then after my insulation, I got what they call here on the data sheet, insulation shield, okay? Here in SimCap, it's called insulation screen. Slight difference. You know, vocabulary, unfortunately, sometimes 
there, there are no standards for the exact vocabulary. But in this example, definitely that's an insulation screen we're talking about, okay? Um, so I'm adding this one. And then after my insulation screen or shield, I've got concentric wire, which is a metallic, um, a metallic type of layer. And you know, it's what is described here as the copper neutral in this, um, in this data sheet, all right? So let me go and add my concentric wire. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, and so what are we left with? We are left with the jacket, all right? So jacket, okay, all good, it's right here. Okay, so at least now, as you can see, it start to take form, you know, take shape. Uh, at least, I think I got my layers properly figured out, which is, which is already a good start, really good start. So now I see plenty of, you know, those red circle things, which means what? Which means I have a lot of information that I haven't informed, okay? The D is for diameter, the TH is for thickness, okay? And I mean, obviously, if we know the thickness of, of one of those layers, the diameter will be automatically calculated. Or if I know the diameter, the thickness will be automatically calculated based on the previous layer, okay? So quite often, you have one or the other, okay? And, and you need to inform one or the other. So, okay, let's start with the conductor first. So you see, the moment I click on this, I have this window here that pops up on the screen. So a few things to inform, all right. Um, the first thing is the material. And here I know that this is aluminum conductor, okay? So I will select aluminum. If you have a custom material, no problem, click custom and you need to have the different parameters of your material, okay? Uh, and, and if I click just to show you, you know, basically you need to, you need to inform all those different material uh, parameters um, and give a name and that's your custom made um, material. But here we will go with aluminum because that's what we have in this problem. Um, for the skin, and proximity loss factors. Again, if you, end, if you know the values and you wanna put a value yourself, you can. Uh, if you put program select, it will select based on what's written in the IEC for those specific known material like copper and aluminum, okay? So uh, for me, I will definitely just follow that, you know, that guidance from the um, IEC standard. Conductor insulation system will hear that's obviously an extruded. And the construction, uh, you know, based on my, my cable attached, that's stranded with a round, um, you know, a round, a round conductor type, you know, stranded. So am I done with that? Let's see. Oh, of course, last information, diameter diameter. Um, so do I have the diameter? I sure hope so, because that's one of the most important information here to get me going. So diameter right here. Okay, I've got this uh, zone of my, my table that give me all the diameter, you know, and here I've been selecting this one. And we've got a minimum over insulation, max over insulation. Um, you know, sometimes you have some, some, you know, because the design of cable, you know, sometimes there's some, some variation. Uh, we would use the max, you know, the max value uh, here, which is 1.235. So let me just enter that 1.235. Okay. So I'm done with this. I will now go to the next layer which is my uh, conductor shield. Okay, like I said earlier, sometimes, you know, cable manufacturer, they like to 
to play with us and, and with you know people in charge of doing modeling of, of you know cable uh, and some information is not always there you know and here in that in that example typically we don't find information about that um, that conductor shield as a matter of fact we do not we do not find you know but it's not it's not unseen okay it's really not unseen uh, that's something that that happens so in that case, from our experience, uh, we have typical value uh, that we would assume, um, you know, and that's that's from experience. And you know, honestly, um, for a user, any user here who is dealing with such situation, you know, you're missing some parameters in the data sheet. I invite you to you know send an email to our tech support, ask some advice. You know, what is the parameter that you should you should take into consideration? Um, so you know we, we we do have some advice and guidelines. Obviously, we cannot make the decision for for you because there is a certain responsibility. But we have guidelines. Um, so here, in a case like this, um, you know, in the inch, we would usually assume that 0 0.02 value. Uh, if it was metric, we assume 0 0.5 uh, millimeter. So here yeah, I put the 0 0.02. Um, and by the way, the material though, um, I believe that information is there if we look at the um conductor shield yeah that's a, that's a semiconductive uh type of layer so that's something that i can put here um semiconductive screen there you go at the bottom all right so i can go to the next and now we're getting to the insulation layer So insulation layer here. Um, so first of all, what is the insulation type? So if we look at this insulation type is that TRXLPE, okay? So you, you've got to know your material a bit, of course, to know what, what this means. Uh, but basically XLP is, is a very, very standard material for insulation. But as you can see here, you've got two types. You got the unfilled and you've got the filled XLPE. And, and that's quite important. You know, some people sometimes don't know that there's a difference between the two. Uh, and the difference is, is can be significant in terms of uh, the thermal performance. So here in our example, we've got this TR XLPE. And TR stands for tree retardant. Okay, and tree retardant. It's, it's you know the treeing effect is, is something that um, is, is something that can affect the, the, the degradation of the, the insulation material, and some cables are specially designed to, to restrict that effect. Okay, and I'm not going to explain all the theory of that treeing effect in, in insulation of cables because that's probably quite a long topic in itself. But TR stands for tree retardant. Okay, so to delay the, that, that effect, to reduce it. So I know that XLP field is what tree retardant is, okay? So I'm gonna select this one. All right. Um, and so now, you know, looking at the um, dimension. So for the insulation, um, ah, sorry, I've lost, I've lost my data in this data sheet, uh, conductor insulation, max over insulation, over embedded jacket. Oh, 
hold on. XO insulation. Oh, I think I made a mistake earlier, actually. Hold on a minute. Let me go back to the conductor. Ah, sorry. I made a mistake here. Apologies. Well, see, that's what happened. You know, you do a cable modeling, you need to carefully look at the table. There are a lot of parameters. It can take some time. Once it's done, it's done. Um, you know, but the conductor diameter is, is 0 0.789. So, you know, that was my mistake. I took this, which is uh, actually the insulation. So, never mind. You know, that's a good thing. I can go and correct. So, point, 0 0.789 is the value that I add here. Okay, this one is okay. All right, yes. And so now that's the value I need to use for the insulation. So sorry, I put that as the conductor originally and that's 1.235. All right. Okay, I'm back on track. Good. So, so here, and one thing to note, um, as you can see here, we have conductor 90 degrees. And that's the temperature limit of conductor. Um, that's the only temperature information we have here. As you can see in SIMCAP, we have the max permissible for design of steady state, which is 90. So that's you know what we have here, that's fine. Um, you also have transient you know, for emergency rating, but sometimes this also is not necessarily indicated in the in the data sheet. So, you know, we'll we'll use the 110 at the moment. Okay, uh, insulation screen same. We don't have information here about this one, and we assume the same. You know, that 0 0.02 or 0 0.5 if we are in millimeters. The point is that those layers usually are are, are very small, and they really don't impact the result of the thermal analysis. You know, there's been a lot of um, studies that have been done on that. It's, it's really not such an important uh, parameter here. So when we don't have the data, we have those um, values that we typically use, okay? Um, concentric wires, so we've got uh, copper, you know, a copper neutral, uh, and it's a round wire type. And, if we look at this data sheet, the type of information we have about the concentric wires, um, which is here, that copper neutral, uh, we have that sized, you know, gauge 12, um, which, which here is convenient because we can just put it here and that will calculate the thickness and the diameter, you know, quite a standard uh, size. And I can put the number of wires, something I can do here. I think that's an information that's here. 16 wires, so I can put it here. There you go. All right, um, I'm pretty much almost through. So it's just my jacket, which is remaining. Um, and then the jacket, you know, you need to look at what is the, the, the material of the jacket and, you know, put the, the right material. What, what we're interested in is, of course, the final diameter of the jacket, which is 1.55. So I'll put here 1.55 as my diameter. Um, and here, I believe that this yeah, polyethylene uh, jacket. And I'll click OK. And, and guess what? We have that cable modeled, you know, as accurately as, as we could with that, that information. So that's how you go about modeling cable in SIMCAP, all right? So I will send you this, you know, data sheet. If you like to go through uh, the steps again, and you know, to try and see how you can get to the, the same result and, you know, so that you can look at the parameters, uh, more than happy to share that with you. All right, so let's get going. I still have quite a lot of things to talk about. So modeling capabilities. Now talking about after the cable, talking about the installations.
So different type of installation in reality, and you know, they can pretty much all be, you know, for most of them be, be designed in SimCap. Um, so first we're looking at things like, you know, trifold formation or flat formation. If you look at directly buried cable, um, so we can do this kind of, this kind of design. Um, we have cable in air capabilities. For the cable in air though, you need to watch out for the restrictions set by the IEC 6287-2-2, which has a very specific group of installation, okay? And, and that's what SIMCAP does for cable in air. You know, we can't do design that really go outside of that just because the standards haven't been written on it, okay? So that's the bit of the, the restrictions here. Uh, same goes for cable on riser pole, okay? Which are, which are also cable in air uh, type of situation. So, you know, you got the riser, which is bringing that cable up um, and this can be modeled as well in the cable in air. And then, you know, installation modeling, we can do uh, directly buried, you know, you can see here it's directly in the soil. We can do in ducts or pipes, so here you've got a trefoil inside of a pipe, you know, picture of what in reality that could be. Um, you can do duct banks, you know, which are this kind of modeling in SIMCAP and that's what in reality you have. So here, you know, a very common case of PVC ducts inside of a concrete bank, you know, concrete uh, duct bank. Um, we can add backfill on top of that, you know, like for example, here you have the duct bank and this is the, the soil, the native soil, but maybe here you want to put a specific soil on top of your duct bank to improve thermal uh, capabilities. We can do cable in casings, which could be uh, underwater in the, in the seabed, you know, uh, like kind of buried, you know, under the, the layer at the bottom of the sea, uh, or it could be in the water hanging there. We have cable in trough, which are this kind of shallow, shallow trench, you know, um, you know, so right, right under um, the, 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 you know, the line of the soil. So not, not very, very deep. You know, if you're not familiar with the, the term shallow, that means not so deep, you know, it's really right under the, right under the soil where you're stepping. Um, and those trough could be filled, you know, as you can see this one, there's some uh, sand or unfilled. Here it's air, you know, uh, and these are very different scenario because filled with something, you talk about conduction, okay? For the heat transfer is conduction here, but in air it's convection. And, and that's a totally different type of um, equation that goes with it. So, you know, filled and unfilled trough are different scenarios. Uh, we've got cable in tunnels capabilities, you know, those large tunnels, um, which could be uh, ventilated or unventilated, okay? Also, another possibility in SIMCAP is modeling heat source, heat sink, okay? So I've got my scenario here, you know, cable buried in the ground, but maybe I've got a pipe of cold water, you know, nearby, or I've got a pipe of hot liquid, hot water, whatever that is, you know, in the vicinity. Well, obviously this impact the results, you know, when it's cold, it's actually helping to, to cool, uh, you know, a little bit. Um, but, you know, when, it, when, it's, when it's really hot, you know, so, you know, it, it, it would affect the result. You know, here I can get a higher current because this is providing cooling. But here my current is lower because this is, you know, affecting the temperature of the environment, okay? So you can model heat source in SIMCAP. So anything in the environment that's a heat source or heat sink, you can model it and include it in the, um, in the simulation. Then of course, as other parameter, 
that affect the modeling and the analysis. Things like, um, you know, how the cable arrangement is done. And, and, you know, in the cable arrangement, the bonding arrangement is something that is very, uh, very important. Um, because as you can see for different type of bonding, you know, and bonding is what? Bonding is how your cable uh, sheath is being grounded basically. Okay, uh, and there are different ways to do that. You know, it could be just a single point bonding. You know, as you can see here, it's just grounded to one end, uh, but it could be two point bonding, you know, bonded uh, at the two ends. It could be that, but with, you know, multiple points and cable transposition as well. So as you can see, the cable are transposed, you know, every certain, you know, lengths, you know. Um, so there are different scenarios, really. Um, it depends on you know the, the type of design uh, you want to implement. You can see there are pros and cons. Obviously, uh, you know some have you know no no standing voltage. So when we look at standing voltage, it's it's really a safety issue. Okay, so standing voltage can can create a, a risk um, for for anyone, you know, in the vicinity. Obviously, that's a risk. Um, but then we look also at losses, you know, which is, uh, which is something that is, is also important when you design, you know, you would design something, you look at performance, you look at safety, um, you look at cost, obviously, you know, and eventually those are projects, real projects that will happen with a certain amount of budget as well. So, you know, and, and the rule of thumb is always that, um, the safest, solution is usually the most expensive and the less i mean the the, the the less good performance come out of it usually you know when when you really take something as really safe in, in engineering point of view quite quite often it becomes not only expensive but also the performance is, is a bit restricted um i don't know it's an observation that i think we, we probably make in general through any kind of design uh, in electrical engineering or other. Uh, but here, that's also the point, you know, when you look at those cross bonding with cable transposition, which has no standing voltage, no losses or very small losses, but, but that is an expensive way to design actually, you know, if you look at the detail of the project. Um, so again, you know, that, that's project consideration. The point in SIMCAP is you can model all those uh, different bonding, you know, and sometimes you can try one and try the other and see how it affects the performance. So um, now looking at uh, analysis capabilities. So different ways to, to look at the analysis in SIMCAP. The starting point is steady state, okay? We look at steady state, you know, we have initial condition, we run the current and, you know, we go to that stable, steady condition and we look at what's the temperature we reach. And that's that's pretty much it. You know, this is steady state. Going to 100% load factor and just looking at when do we reach that temperature limit. Um, and, you know, in, in SimCap, in steady state, we have different things we can look at. Um, we can, actually reduce the load factor and put less than 100% of load factor, which they called, you know, this daily uh, cyclic loading. Um, so it's still a steady state, but you just reduce the, 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 the value of the load factor to less than 100%. And we also have three different types of solution. You know, what we call um, opacity, but equally loaded or unequally loaded, and then temperature. What's the difference between those three? Well, the temperature is you know, easy to understand. We, we set the value of current. So for example, I say, this cable, I want 200 ampere, this cable, 300 ampere, this cable, 100 ampere. And I ask the software, what is gonna be the temperature based on all the environmental conditions and, and the design and stuff. Uh, and it tells me, well, you know, temperature will be 49.1 here, 48.6 here, 40.2 here, okay? So I'm looking for the temperature as the solution. Opacity here, I look at the current as the solution. 
in two, two different scenarios, equally loaded and equally loaded. What does that mean? Equally loaded means I want the same result, the same current value for my three cable at the end of the problem. Meaning what? Meaning here, I can see that 90 degrees, most likely the temperature limit of that cable is, is being reached first by this cable for 314 ampere. So because I'm in equally loaded system, I want my two other cable to stop at 314 ampere, same value of current. And tell me what is the temperature associated to it, okay? So that's equally loaded. And equally loaded, I allow different value of current. So instead of restricting it to 314 ampere here, I will allow different value of current for each, each system, okay? And here what's happened is, you know, it's a totally different result, really. So that's how I can change the different steady state uh, solution in SimCap. And then I've got also the transient analysis, which, we, which we've talked about, okay? And that's the kind of report we can find. So here we talk about, for example, a, a profile over time. So here, you know, if, if this is my, my load profile for my circuit, you know, time is here. And here, for example, I'm looking at what is the, the temperature value over time? Okay, and in the same time, what is the current value over time? You know, and I've got this curve that can be given and it's not a steady state. It's really saying, look, my, my current will not be the same over time. Maybe you're doing emergency rating. You know, you'll have to overload a cable for a certain amount of time. You know, is that possible or not? Are you gonna really heat up the cable too much and, and damage the cable, you know? So that's probably what you would use in this kind of condition. Another thing you can look at also is temperature field calculation. So you wanna know what is the impact in terms of temperature rise in my environment? You know, how much the ground is gonna, is gonna get hotter around the cables? That's something that, that can be done also. And again, in terms of analysis, you can complete that also with uh, all those add-on modules that we have. Um, if you want to enhance specific type of the analysis, get magnetic field calculation, uh, get more cable impedance calculation, uh, parametric studies where you change parameters and look at different um, results. Duct bank optimizer, you want to optimize the position of cable in duct bank. Uh, you want to get short circuit ratings. Those are things um, that you can do. All right. So we'll jump again to the software so that I can show you a bit of you know, installation modeling and analysis. Um, my plan is to kind of show some directly buried cable and potentially using also the multiple duct bank to see you know, how to model something like this uh, based on different layers of soil, different resistivity value. You know, that's an interesting scenario to model. Um, and look at you know, what is steady state, what is parametric, transient probably won't have time for that. Um, temperature contour reporting. So let's, let's get to it. You know, we'll, we'll start and we'll see how much I, I, I can show you with that. So first, when starting a new study, um, the software will ask you, do you want to use this study as template? You don't have to, okay? You can say no and you start from a blank sheet, you know, start from scratch. Uh, if you wanna use this one and modify it, yeah, you can. To me, I would start, you know, from, from square one and I will do a buried, um, 27 May, and um, that's 
that's my, you know, anyway, title one, I don't have to put anything. Execution title is important, you know, so that's my execution number one. Um, and I just put one, you can be more detailed, obviously. So as I explained before, you know, we have different solution for steady state and we could also select transient or not. Okay, I'll not select transient for now. And I will select equally loaded for now. I can change later, so it's not too important. So I'll just equally loaded, okay. And now I want to do a directly buried installation. So you can see those screenshots showing a little bit what are the possibilities. So I can see some directly buried, I can see a cable in a pipe, you know, pipe type cable. Uh, I can add some heat source, I can do some potentially cable crossing. Um, anyway, I'll start with this. Environmental parameters, go through it. You know, of course it's important to put the right ambient temperature, the native soil thermal resistivity, which here is put as one, but it could be a totally different value, okay? Um, so you need to, you need to see. Uh, about that, you know, I consider um, and modify those environmental parameters. I, I keep the default value for now. So what do I get next? I get my, um, you know, cables. Well, what are the circuits I want to introduce in the design? Um, I got standard, one cable, one phase, or I got multiple, which could be several cable for one phase. I'll take standard and I will put one three phase uh, single core cable. And we'll look at a flat formation, something quite easy. I could change some of those parameters, the power factor and so on. Um, I'm not gonna do it here. Um, conductor temperature, you could change the limit here as well. If you wanna consider a specific value, um, you know, right now, I'll leave it as 90 by default. Okay, so what happens next? My installation data here, I got those, you know, three phase that were added at this place. I can go into, um, well, you know, I, I could double click on it or I could go into edit. You know, if I go into edit and I select only phase A, you know, and for example, I want to take my 25, KV cable at the top here. Um, in the installation, you will see absolute coordinates, you know, X and Y. Um, the problem is I have selected only phase A. If I want a flat formation, then I will need to do phase B and then I will need to do phase C, which is not what I want. So what is the way I can do that? Oh, and, and, and by the way, here you can change any time the unit system. So you see it's Imperial, I click on it, it becomes metric. Um, and I'll switch to metric um, because I'm more used to that. So here, if I select the three phase instead of one, when I go to edit now and I get again my 25 kV cable here at the top, now the installation becomes more interesting, you know? The coordinate system is defined as a group. So I'll define my most top left cable position, which by default is phase A. You know, that's how the, the software does it. You can change that. Uh, and I will put it as minus 0 0.2 and the depths, I will put it at a meter. And because I want flat, I will put three columns, one row. So three columns, one row. And then I need to tell the distance between the cables, which I will put as 0 0.2. Okay, so I got my three cables. All right, so this has been positioned. And this, by the way, if you're wondering, this is a drag and drop option, okay? I can take a single core cable, bring it here, drop it here, okay? Uh, another option, but you know, you can also just go here, add a circuit, you know, my, my single core cable circuit here and define coordinates. Both, both is okay, you know, you can do both. So 
Now, am I good to do a steady state? Well, if I click on the steady state, it's going to tell me no. You know, you have to complete the specific installation data. Okay. Specific installation data, which is right here. Okay, this is installation, my cable, my coordinates. This is specific installation data. And that is all about bonding arrangement, first of all. So, you know, is it a bonded uh, at both ends? Is it a single bonding, etc. cetera? You know, so I can put single bonded. And well, I'm pretty much good to go once I've done this. Interesting point, you could change the frequency per cable. So let's say you've got an, a DC cable, you can put zero, that's gonna consider DC. Uh, or even if you have an AC, but different frequency, you could change the value here. Okay, if I don't change it, it keeps uh, 60 Hertz, which is my you know, system frequency here by default. I could change it to 50, okay? So for example, if I go here, I click, I can change 50 Hertz, you know, right here in the corner. And now when I go back to this, you can see 50 Hertz is the default frequency. All right, so I click on solving. And I'm gonna get that steady state result. And that's it. I got my temperature value and the current associated to it. The middle cable is the one reaching 90 degrees first, which is not surprising because it's got the impact of the two other cable. You got a report button at the bottom here. If you click on it, you could have the, you know, SimCap report viewer or the Microsoft Excel. You know, the SimCap report viewer is a nice way to quickly see the report, um, which has been introduced recently. Uh, so I could put the electrical uh, parameter, the cable input. You select what you want, you click OK, and you're going to get <clears throat> that reporting coming up. There you go. Different tabs, different parameters. Uh, you know, so it's a pretty, pretty complete uh, reporting. All right. Takes a little bit of time to be generated. There's a lot of parameters. Um, and once you have this, you got, you know, your electrical parameters, induced voltage, induced current losses, uh, steady state summary, study summary, et cetera. So it's a, it's a very complete uh, reporting. All right. All right, so that, that is one, uh, you know, scenario, which I'm gonna save um, for the buried, you know, and now, if you recall here, I'm showing this, you know, which is a, a type of cable, you know, that's a trefoil and that's pipe in trefoil, you know, inside of a, you know, backfill with 0 0.6 thermal resistivity, inside of another one with 0 0.9, you know, and under another one with 1.2, which could be the native soil, or maybe here there is native soil on top. So <clears throat> without following this too closely, you know, I, I just want to show you quickly the, the capability to do it with SimCap. So if I do a new study and I said, um, you know, MDB test 27.5, okay. So now this time I'm gonna go here on the multiple duck bank, which you can see contain all this kind of uh, potential design. And in my example, I'm going to say I've got, let's say, two backfills, okay? I got one, which is, you know, uh, for my buried cable, one on top, and then I've got, you know, the, the native soil, you know? So just to make a simple scenario, not exactly like my uh, drawing just now, but close. So how does this MDB module work? Here, environmental parameter, I don't touch. Um, and here I will want to put, so, you know, just to show you how to do that. So here I've got 
um, trefoil, pipe in tref trefoil actually, you know, uh, it's not trefoil in pipe, it's pipes in trefoil, which is important, it's different. Um, so that's actually this one, ducts, sorry, ducts in trefoil, not pipe. So I've got, I'm gonna have one and I'm clicking okay. So that's fine. And now I got two tabs, you know, I've got my cable and I've got my backfield. So what do I wanna do? I wanna go here, first of all, and define a first backfill installation. When I go here, I have one area called B1, which is my backfill area. I can start defining it. And let's say I want to define uh, the first layer, which is on top of my backfill with the cable inside. So it's my backfill number one. I will start adjusting um, the dimension a bit. <clears throat> I can put one 0 0.5 meter on the right 0 0.5 and I'm going to say it goes down to <clears throat> one meter let's see okay then I go to the next backfill I can do <clears throat> b2 and I want to put it right under and that's going to be where my cables are going to be so right under you can see b3 is the area I want to be so I'm selecting b3 here so I can define a backfill around here and I'm going to adjust again, left and right about the same uh, dimension because that's a trench, you know what I want to design. And it's going to go to, let's say, 1.75 meter. Okay, I apply that. Okay, I got my two backfills. Uh, and by the way, thermal resistivity of the backfill here by default has been put as one. But if that was something like 0 0.9, I adjust it. And for this one, it's one as well. If it's something like 0 0.6, I adjust it. Okay, now I got 0 0.6, 0 0.9, and one is my native soil. So now, how about cables? <clears throat> cables, I wanna put them inside of this backfill, right? It's important to first select the right backfill, okay? Where do you want your cable to be? This backfill with the right frame or this one? Well, if you want this one, select this one. Then we go in here and we define again, let's take a different cable, maybe that's 15 kV. Um, and let's define the coordinate of the trefoil, which as you can see, we define the center of it. So I'll put it at zero. And the depth, I'll put it somewhere here, which is a 1.5, let's say, or 1.35 motor is the middle and here I got a duct dimension so I can define dimension for my cables in the trefoil. You can define the diameter here or you can use some standard size to make my life easier I'm going to do that like I took the side three and as you can see now I've got those ducts and that's what it is okay. So in just a few clicks I got you know two back fields you know into the layer of native soil and my cable in ducts. And now when I go to a specific installation, which I need to define, I'm gonna define the bonding, which I can do, you know, I've got different options that are available. Um, I will just pick any of it at the moment. Um, duct construction, that is an important question. Um, you know, is it a custom material or is it something like, uh, PVC duct in concrete or buried. I'm going to take that. You know, PVC is a, it's quite widely used. Um, and what's inside of my duct? Is it air? Is it water? Is it a solid duct fitting? You have the option. Okay. So here I put air, but you could change that. Okay. And now, do I want to go in here and and solve it? And pretty much, you know, in very quick, very quick, you know, few clicks, um, I've been able to, to model a reasonably complex, um, you know, reasonably complex installation um, because we've got two different layers of soil plus the native soil. So we have three different thermal resistivity. We could change also thermal resistivity inside of the duct. Uh, so, you know, that makes the problem. If you have to do that manually and calculate manually, 
that that is a lot of things to to check. Um, and finally, you know, if we look at the temperature contour, well, as you can see, I've just click on on this one here, select my different values, and and I got it here. You know, I've got my different lines of temperature around the installation, and um, and, and and I can just go back to my uh, opacity result. Yeah. So I that's 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 all for my demonstration here. I want to leave some time, and I know the time is is running fast. Um, and you know, I didn't have time to to touch the transient 3D uh, or the parametric study. These are things that uh, you can discover uh, with the with the the trial as well. So I invite you to explore. And uh, if you have questions, obviously, uh, we're more than happy to 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 help with that. All right. Jong, I'm done with my um, demonstration yeah. here. Okay, uh, let me summarize again for some people in uh, this. Uh, can you come back to uh, the catalog um, first for the uh, cable catalog? Oh, sorry, the the tata sheet of the cable. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, sure. I will start from this. Uh, tôi xin tóm tắt cái phần nội dung của cái buổi training ngày hôm nay thì chúng ta đã được trải qua hai phần phần đầu tiên đó là mô hình hóa cát thì uh, bác sĩ bác trương có đã đi trải qua một cái hành trình để mình có thể tạo ra một cái cát giống trong uh, uh, catalog thì uh, điều quan trọng là thứ nhất là mình phải có catalog trong tay thì mình uh, xác định các cái thông số ví dụ như là vỏ cát các cái lõi cát ví dụ như là lõi nhiều sợi hay lõi một sợi lõi bằng nhôm hay lõi bằng đồng rồi là uh, chiều đường kính của các cái lớp vỏ đó thì trong phần mềm sim cát thì các cái đường kính hoặc là cái độ dày nó sẽ được tự động chia cho nhau nên là nếu trong cái cát mà có đường kính như mọi người nhập vào nó sẽ tự động nó sẽ ra được cái chiều dày hoặc trường hợp mà mình có một số cát thì họ để chiều dày của từng cái lớp thì mình uh, đọc kỹ các cái thông số và mình bỏ vào thì khi đó mình sẽ mô hình hóa được một cái chủng loại cát và một cái tip ở trong đây thì là trong cái phần cable nghe là phần đầu tiên ấy, nó sẽ có rất nhiều các cái thư viện của các cái chủng loại um, cáp tương tự thì um, uh, bác Minh Văn Trương giải thích cho mọi người đó là cách thức tổ chức từ một cái cáp mới nhưng mà trong quá trình làm mình có thể lấy lại trong thư viện uh, library những cái mẫu cáp mà nó phù hợp từ đó mình có thể chỉnh sửa giống như là mình hay dùng từ copy hay là paste là mình chỉnh sửa từ đấy thì nó sẽ dễ và nhanh hơn À, miễn sao có một cách để kiểm tra là mình à, sau khi mình đã mô hình hóa được cái cáp đó rồi thì mình à, thử test xem nó đúng với thông số của nhà sản xuất hay không khi mình test thông số tương tự giống của nhà sản xuất rồi thì coi như là cái mô hình cáp mà mình làm ra là tương đối là đã chính xác rồi thì đấy là một cái tiếp để chia sẻ với anh chị thì cái bước thứ hai thì uh, trong cái quá trình uh, tiếp theo đó là các cái case study về cái cách cách thức uh, tổ chức cát thì uh, bác sĩ nhân cũng hướng dẫn mọi người cách mô phỏng uh, về khi mà đồng bộ tải hoặc là tải phân bố thì nghĩa là có trường hợp mà mình uh, có sự mối liên đới giữa uh, tải và cái nhiệt độ cũng như là khi mà mình muốn các cái uh, phần cáp mà chịu tải như nhau thì nhiệt độ xung quanh nó như thế nào hoặc là khi mà mình uh, muốn giữ nhiệt độ thì các cái tải của các loại cáp chưa sẽ phải phân đồ bổ như thế nào thì đó cũng là cái một cái flexible một cái linh động để mình có thể áp dụng vào trong các cái bài mô phỏng của mình À, và sau đó thì sẽ có rất nhiều các cái cây liên quan đến nhiều cái cách thức lắp đặt thì gần như trong sim card nó đã họ đã thiết kế và design gần như đã bao quát hết các các cái ứng dụng từ các cái ứng dụng trôn cáp trong dưới đất hoặc là đi trong nhiều lớp vật liệu khác nhau tại vì trong thực tế có những lúc mình trôn cáp trong lớp cáp rồi sỏi rồi ở trên mình có những cái lớp nó khác thì mình khi mình hiểu được cái cấu trúc tổ chức của sản của phần mềm rồi thì khi mình nhập các thông số vào thì mình sẽ được cái kết quả uh, tương đối chính xác thì xong cái license của Dương có gửi mọi người thì mọi người sẽ có đủ có thời gian để mọi người trải nghiệm và uh, xem cái tính năng của sản phẩm thì đấy là về Dương tóm tắt hai cái nội dung của ngày hôm nay thì sau buổi này thì mọi người tiếp tục sẽ có cái thời gian trải nghiệm cái license mà uh, activation code Dương để ở trong chat box uh, và sau đây thì Dương sẽ quay lại cái phần được question uh, câu hỏi và trả lời thì nếu anh chị nào mà có một câu hỏi nào nữa thì mình sẽ Uh, chat lên thì Dương sẽ interface với Sebastian Trương để cùng trả lời mọi người Có những câu hỏi vì thời gian nó ngắn quá thì Dương sẽ lưu lại và sẽ liên hệ trực tiếp mọi người để cùng thảo luận về sau Thì uh, Dương sẽ bắt đầu the session question and answer uh, Ok Sebastian, uh, so uh, firstly we will start for the question and answer sure. and I sure. uh, 
I saw I, I, I saw some of the question you asked. Um, yes, for example, the uh, the XLP. Um, okay, I'm just just gonna display this, um, and I'm and I'm happy to share about that. Okay. Um, sorry, went a bit further. Okay. So um, so when um, yeah, when I talk about the um, the, the XLP, there was this topic about field or unfield. Um, all right, so it's. It's 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 really one specific uh, characteristic about about the material. Okay, you 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 got to see that some of those XLP are, are qualified as field, and some are qualified as unfilled. Um, the one which are qualified as field is you know other, otherwise called uh, with this letter TR TR, which can be the tree retardant. Okay, that's that's what it stands for. Um, and tree retardant is is uh, basically referring to the treeing effect, okay, which is something that affects cable and can degrade the material, okay, uh, and that is due to you know something that happened when, uh, as written here, you know the insulation is exposed to moisture and and high temperature, so. This treeing effect is a consequence of that, you know. And some cable are designed with a, a different type of this XLP, you know, a variation that's called field or tree retardant. It's a different type of, you know, a variation of that XLP that is is designed so that it can prevent the treeing effect, slow it down, you know, and make sure that you prevent a fast degradation of the material, okay? So it's one, one of the characteristic of the cable that can be you know, in certain cable design. So your cable will be either with uh, the unfilled XLP or the filled XLP. And like I was saying earlier, you know, again, this is another example of when you know, we have a balance between trying to have a safe, uh, you know, safe or maybe preventing uh, longevity of the cable but you know we we have other impact on, on on performances so you know when we have field the longevity is better um but you know actually unfilled we produce more capacity you know but that's this is a design choice you know is do you want to care more about maintaining your cable for a long time or you care more about really you know, maximizing the current, you know, so, so you may need to look at both, you know, and compare and see eventually what is the, the better choice. But this is really two different characteristics. Okay. Um, so that's, I think, one uh, first question uh, that I've seen. The other um, one, you talk uh, about. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Uh Uh, về cái câu hỏi mà mọi người có một uh, anh hỏi của Dương là về um, uh, là về TRXLPE và phần về XLPE thì uh, lúc bác cũng có giải thích bằng tiếng Anh rồi thì uh, nó cũng có cơ sở và người ta đã nghiên cứu và người ta đã đưa ra các cái giải thích thì uh, sau cái câu hỏi này thì uh, Dương sẽ gửi cái tài liệu này để anh chị nghiên cứu thêm cụ thể hơn thì cái này là dựa trên một cơ sở ở trên mà người có thể thấy trên màn hình đấy là họ đã giải thích cái việc mà tại sao trong quá trình mô phỏng người ta à, có thể xài cái ELPE unfilled giống như là trường hợp mà chi à, à, retardant ELPE thì mấy câu hỏi này đã đáp ứng được cái băn khoăn của anh nghĩa chưa À, rồi ok thì sau này mình sẽ gửi sau buổi này mình sẽ gửi cái uh, giải thích chi tiết mà mọi người đang thấy ở trên cái màn à, Dương chưa nghe rõ không biết anh chị có thể nói lại được không ạ? Rồi ok thì uh, trường hợp đó thì mình sẽ đi qua câu hỏi thứ hai đó là trường hợp mà cáp ba lõi mà mình có thích hợp các quang thì mình có thêm mô phỏng được không? Uh, so uh, you can uh, come to next your question uh, about the three cost cable with the fiber optic in the center. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, as far as the um, thermal analysis in SIMCAP goes, uh, you know, we don't see an impact of the fiber optic that would be placed in the cable 
um, in, in terms of empathy performance. Okay, um, so, so that's that the first thing. You know? So when, when doing steady state, normally the, the, the fiber optic is not considered as you know, a heat source or something that really is gonna affect the thermal uh, behavior. So we're not concerned about it, okay? But now it's an interesting uh, question because in SimCap, uh, we also have the capability to do what we call RTTR, you know, which is the real-time um, thermal rating. And this is an application where when you have the fiber optic in the cable and this fiber optic is connected to a TTS system to measure the temperature of the cable, we can integrate the engine of SimCap into the DTS to give a real-time reading and in real-time uh, rating of the opacity. okay? So basically the fiber optic does not affect the, the result of a steady state analysis in SimCap, but in SimCap, you have the possibility to design sections placing that fiber optic at the right place in case you're dealing with this kind of real-time application. Does that make sense? Mm, yes, ok. Uh, I think it makes sense. Uh, chắc là chúng ta giải thích câu hỏi này tại vì thực ra thì uh, đối với cái phần mà cáp quang thì uh, chúng ta có thể uh, định nghĩa rõ là cáp quang không phải là thành phần mang nhiệt tại vì cáp quang là các tín hiệu và trong cái bản thân uh, uh, các tín hiệu và không chịu mang tải về ampere hay là uh, gì đó mà cáp quang chỉ đơn thuần là truyền tín hiệu nên gần như nó không phải là nguồn nhiệt thì uh, dẫn đến thì cái uh, trong quá trình tính toán mình có thể uh, bài bác được cái phần mà cái cáp quang ở trong nhưng miễn là mình có thể uh, trong lúc mà phần mình vẫn phải bố trí đúng theo cơ sở của phần uh, là cách thức lắp đặt của các nhưng bên cạnh đó thì thực ra thì uh, cáp quang ngoài cái cáp quang đó thì là ở trong sim cáp nó cũng có một cái ứng dụng đó là gọi là, là, là uh, real time temperature transition monitoring thì giống như người ta cũng dùng cái cáp quang ở giữa cái chính cái điểm mà mình đang có cái sợi cáp quang đó thì là để monitor cái phần nhiệt độ uh, cho từng sợi cáp theo gọi là thời gian thực thì đây là ứng dụng của cái cáp quang một số như uh, cái ứng dụng mà người ta đã xài cáp quang nên là có thể nói là cáp quang thì không ảnh hưởng gì đến cái phần mà mình uh, tính toán cái độ phát nhiệt mà thậm chí nó còn được sử dụng để uh, giúp cho cái quá trình mà uh, trong một số ứng dụng là để uh, uh, giám sát uh, thời gian thực về cái nhiệt độ của cáp thế đấy là câu hỏi về mà trường hợp mà cáp quang uh, có bị ảnh hưởng hay không thì thực ra thì có một số cái cáp quan này thì nó liên quan đến các cái cáp giống như là các cái số cáp ngầm hay là cáp dưới biển hay một số cái cáp mà người ta hay đi chung giữa là cáp động lực và cáp quang ở trong đó thì câu hỏi này sẽ phù hợp với các cái ứng dụng như vậy thì chúng ta có thể tin tưởng đó là trường hợp cáp quang đi vào trong đó thì không ảnh hưởng đến khả năng mang tải không ảnh hưởng đến khả năng tính toán của phần mệnh yeah, Ok Sebastian, you can uh, move to next question Ok um... In case of long cable cross bonded more than one cycle, each cycle is not equal. Can we simulate? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I understand this question actually. Um, are we talking about um, like spacing of cable section? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I understand this one. Can, can you try and clarify it? Um, uh... Có thể nhờ anh Hiếu giải thích rõ thêm về cái câu hỏi của anh được không ạ? À? Thì để Dương có cái giải thích ngược lại với bác Sebastian Trương cụ thể hơn Nghĩa là cái ứng dụng anh đang dùng cross bonding nghĩa là như thế nào không ạ? À? Alo anh Hiếu nghe rõ không ạ? À? Is it, is it what we're talking about here? Um, you know, because here, for example, I mean the cross bonded um, configuration um, and, and we have this parameter, you know, the, the minor um, section lengths here. So we can specify uh, the, the P and Q, you know, so you've got this, you know, you can define all those distances. Is, is it what we are talking about? 
Uh, I'm trying to ask him, but uh, okay. not answer. Okay. But you can still continue to uh, discuss, uh, to explain like this, so I can uh, try to summarize with them. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, this if if that's a good understanding of the, the question, that that's that's the answer. You know, is that you know you can not only yes, you can do uh, the, the cross bonded, um, and you can define, you know, user supplied uh, P and Q value. You know, and and you can see those P and Q parameter as defined here, you know, which is, you know, you got the A value is that that length of section. Uh, and here you got a, you know, factor Q with that factor A and, and so on here for the uh, factor P. So you have to enter the values here. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I uh, can I understand like the QI or the I is like a length of uh, one cycle? Well, if, if yeah, I'm, and I'm not sure if length of a cycle is is, is the right vocabulary because I, I honestly I, I don't have that knowledge um, to of this term, you know. But here, that's that's showing when the crossing of the bonding is is happening, you know, and where where it's being located along the cable. So so yeah, you know, you can adjust a different different lengths for that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thì câu hỏi này có nó hơi chuyên biệt một chút nhưng mà trên màn hình mọi người có thể thấy đó là họ cũng đã chia ra là khoảng là ba chu kỳ là mình có thể các cái hệ số về PQ của hai chu kỳ giống nhau thì mình hoàn toàn mình uh, có thể thay đổi và mình mô phỏng tại vì cái này là mình mô phỏng theo từng cái phân đoạn của các ở đây ít nhất là trong cái màn hình của mình mình có đã được ba cái thành phần là QA, A và PA cái là mình đã được ba cái uh, À, phân đoạn khác nhau thì trường hợp đến cái phân đoạn khác nhau mà hệ thống Q, P và Q khác nhau thì uh, uh, mình coi như đấy là một cái phân khúc mới và mình có thể tiếp tục mình mô phỏng uh, uh, theo cái chu kỳ mới thì nghĩa là tại vì mình đang quan sát là khả năng phát nhiệt tại từng cái section nghĩa là từng cái mặt cắt và từng cái uh, độ chiều dài của đoạn cắt thì đối với cái cách thức lắp đặt sẽ cắt PQ ở PQ1, PQ2 thì là mình có kết quả như này và đối với trường hợp mà PQ có hệ số khác ở phân đoạn tiếp theo thì mình tiếp tục mình mô phỏng lần thứ hai thì trong cái phần ứng dụng của người cáp thì người ta đang có cho phần mình là PQ và A thì nếu như theo dương thấy thì hiện tại là đáp ứng cho giống như là một cái một cái độ dài một cái chu kỳ cố định còn trường hợp mình muốn thay đổi thì coi như mình đã coi như đấy là một cái study thứ hai thì uh, mình có thể thực hiện uh, tiếp một bài uh, uh, mô phỏng thứ hai thì uh, đấy là phần uh, trả lời của bác C bác chưa thì uh, trường hợp uh, anh uh, Hiếu còn uh, chưa thấy hỏi bác thì có thể uh, tiếp tục uh, để lại câu hỏi đấy vào trong cái phần uh, form link cuối cùng của session ngày hôm nay thì uh, uh, bên đội vũ uh, kỹ thuật của bên uh, Dương sẽ tiếp tục uh, trao đổi với anh để làm rõ cụ thể thêm theo về qua cái cách uh, giải thích của bác sĩ bác chưa thì giới thiệu là nó hoàn toàn nó có thể uh, đáp ứng được cái nhu cầu tính toán với PQ ở hai chu kỳ khác nhau. Rồi, cảm ơn anh Hiếu nhé. <cười> ok, so we can uh, come to the next question about the um, underground cable. Uh, he uh, said that only uh, he want to simulate for the five or six meter uh, yeah. from the yeah. ground. Yeah. <cười> Well, uh, okay, um, yeah, and, and, and I was ahead a bit and looking into that question. Um, I we, we we can solve it in SimCap, you know, like I can I can run right now the, the underground design I've shown and and put the cable at six meters or deeper and and I can find the solution. So honestly, what I'm missing right now is what is the the standard. Um, Because, because to be honest, that's the first time somebody uh, pointed out to me that there is this three meter restriction. So let, let me ask the question, please, and, and give you detail. What, what is the, the technology that, you know, I mean, what, what is the technical reference for that? Um, we can find a solution that I can tell you, it's not a problem. You can, you can put deeper and you'll, you'll find the solution. So I need to, I need to check um, what, what's the, the standard of reference because obviously our standard of reference most of the time is IEC. So if there's such restriction on the IEC, is it that we have you know, another paper that was written by some researcher to, to demonstrate that? I will need to research on it. Mm -hmm. So my apologies, but I will need to, we can find the solution, definitely can solve it, no problem. Uh, but, um, uh, in the software, we still can put uh, five or six meters, no problem, is correct, Sebastian? 
Correct, correct. That's yeah. what, okay. that's, so that's I think what that's I'm saying. Uh, OK, tiếp cái câu hỏi thứ hai về cái tiêu chuẩn nào mà khi mình làm cho cát từ 5 đến 6 mét thì uh, cái này cũng là lần đầu tiên bị hỏi về câu hỏi này nhưng mà trong phần mềm thì người ta hoàn toàn người ta cũng đã có khả năng tính toán uh, được thoải mái cái sổ chiều sâu của cát uh, so với mặt đất nên anh chị cứ tạm thời mình cứ tin tưởng mình xài vào trong phần mềm thì còn cơ sở khoa học về tiêu chuẩn nào thì bác sĩ Bắc Trương sẽ uh, check và phản hồi mọi người tiếp theo về trên cơ sở khoa học cũng như cái bài báo mà cũng như là cái sự giới hạn của tiêu chuẩn IEC nếu có mà về phần mềm thì hoàn toàn có thể mô phỏng được với những cái case study như vậy. Okay, the last question is about how the impact of a loss factor or daily loss factor to the capacity of cable. Um, daily loss the last factor daily loss factor I'm, try, I'm trying to think where we have that part i think it lies the shape of the history uh, it is like uh, no no it is like uh, the variable of a uh, lot uh, during day um yeah if that if that's what it is um you know definitely um you, you you probably will find information about you know losses in the in the report so you know i i, I don't know how to i mean i'm trying to understand how the question is is turned you you have information about losses so you know depending on you know what you're studying is it a steady state uh with 100 percent load factor uh you know you you'll find uh information about um about the losses in the report so if i would do a Ah, sorry, I close it now and I cannot find any more. Um, oh, never mind, I can just reopen that. It's got to be a yeah. You know, if I if I just solve this um, this directly buried, uh, very similar to what we've done. Um, inside the report, you you will see all the the loss uh, information. So, you know, there's there's really one tab. On the electrical that's gonna that's gonna talk about losses 